Good morning. Now, you were talking louder than that to each other before we got started. Good morning. There you are. There you are. My name is Sandra Clay. I'm the pastor here at Cook Shania Methodist Church. Welcome. Those of you who are joining us here in our sanctuary, those of you who are joining us live stream, and we welcome those of you who are going to find us only God knows when. Uh, we want you to know that we are praying for you already. We feel your presence among us and we pray God's best upon you. Uh, no matter what it is that life holds for you uh, right now. A couple of uh, announcements that we want to walk through. I'm not just um, checking, my, uh, checking my email. But you'll notice uh, that there is a prayer shawl down front. We're going to move it so that we've got room for communion and we don't get it dirty. But it will be back on the altar at the close of the service for you to pray over if you would like to. Uh, it is a gift from Caroline to a young girl by the name of Vivian. M maybe uh, you know Vivian's story. Uh, she is the granddaughter of a friend of Caroline's. Um, uh, high, a high school friend of Caroline's. She's a, a resident here in Mount Juliet, uh, has been sick um, with lymphoma and the ensuing treatment since December uh, and is uh, at Vanderbilt now. Uh, what a sweet reminder, uh, the love that went into the making of this prayer shawl and the reminder that it will be. And Caroline is allowing us to be a part of that gift uh, too. So we'd love for you to just simply say a prayer over Vivian and her family and her prayer givers, uh, her caregivers um, before you leave today uh, so that we might uh, package that up and make sure that she gets it. And there are tons of other ways for us to be of service to God by serving God's people. So just a quick reminder that today is the last, it is today, right? Yes, today's the last day that you can order your box lunch for next Sunday. Great way to keep mom out of the kitchen or grandma out of the kitchen uh, to be able to do that. So congregational care, uh, we'll be sure that you've got plenty to eat uh, that Sunday, but we do need your reservation Tons of opportunities with backpack program and SALT. All that information is in uh, the bulletin. Uh, Ms. Carroll and the mission team have given us the dates for project transformation. We need at least seven to ten volunteers to be able to read with and to talk with uh, kids and let them practice uh, the skills that they've learned over the school year uh, during the summer so they don't lose uh, all of that. And you'll also see some other opportunities opportunities as well uh, for new ministries, a caregiver's um, connection, all of that information is there, so is uh, information we want to celebrate our graduates, uh, and so we need their names and all their goody information that we might be able to celebrate them, and we'll do that a week from, two weeks from today. It is a good thing for us to be in the house of God today. We come to offer our gifts and to begin this week celebrating who God is, that he is the source and the center of all that we are and all that we do. But we also find in this place that we could never um, outgive God. God is the reason why we're able to be in this place, why we are together, bonded together in Christ for this hour. It is good for us to be in the presence of God, and we're glad that you're here. Let's worship God. Good morning. Good morning. God. 
God is good. All the time. And all the time, God is good. Let us pray. O oh God of Easter joy, who showed mercy to those who had not known mercy, who made a lowly people into your people, who fashioned a wilderness into a highway and turned a victim of death into the bearer of life, let us feel your transforming power in our lives. Enlighten our worship of you as you enlighten Jesus' worship of you, that we might adore you as he adored you and serve you as he served you in spirit and in truth. Amen. I'm Bonnie Johnson, and I will be your liturgist this month. Please stand as you are able for the call to worship. Remain standing for the first hymn. On the foundation of the apostles and prophets, God has built his church. Jesus Christ himself is the chief cornerstone. Join us together in unity of spirit that we may become a holy temple acceptable to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our first hymn is Alleluia, Alleluia. We'll sing verses 1 and 2. It's found on page 162 in your hymnal or on the monitors. Please be seated. Our scripture this morning comes from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 through 10. Come to him a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ, for it stands in Scripture. See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Do you even... Uh-oh, what am I doing wrong, Eric? Okay. So do you, do you even know what a cornerstone is? Do you? What's a cornerstone, Miss Patty? So uh, it's often uh, there uh, in the building of a home, or it could be a church. Uh, any other building with great significance, uh, and it might hold information that's legible from the outside. Uh, but it's also uh, may it may contain memorabilia. It's almost like it's a hollow stone or in the cavity of a natural stone or brick uh, or a block, you, you put that there. But what, what does a cornerstone do for a building other than uh, give you some information about when that was built? Say it again. It's the first stone. And is there uh, any significance to why a first stone should be so important? It's a part of a, fa it's a, not just a part of the foundation, but it's foundational for at least two reasons. You want to try to take a guess at what those two reasons are? It would fall down without it. Uh, it's actually the very reason why uh, it would fall down. It gives it stability and it gives it a sense of solidarity. There is a working together of all of the blocks or bricks or planks or logs, if not beams, because... Um, a cornerstone orients as much as anything. What, what I mean is once you've placed that corner stone, then every other stone gets its assigned place by virtue of that first stone. Otherwise, if the orientation is more haphazard, there will be no stability, no strong foundation for the building. What else? That's, that's one. What else does a cornerstone do? Think, think, think. So there's information that may give us a hint. Anymore, we can rehab and repurpose anything, but often in the building of that structure because you, the capstone or the cornerstone orients the, uh, the position, the laying down of every brick or block that's a part of the building. Uh, you can tell as the building takes shape what it's going to be. How do you know, think about all the building that's gone on in Wilson County in the last two or three years. How do you know when it's going to be a, a home? A house. Well, eventually when windows and doors go in, but usually you can tell by the other buildings that are around that you know it's going to be a neighborhood. Uh, it's going to look a little bit similar. You can also tell by the layout, which begins with the cornerstone. How can you tell it's going to be a lot of homes, like an apartment complex? And you have to know how the building is going to be laid out to know where the plumbing is going to be. You have to have uh, an idea already in mind, but it all is oriented, bless you, it is all, I guess the Jenga blocks are a little dusty, so sorry about that. So y'all know about Jenga, right? Yeah, what, what's going to happen if, uh, 
Okay, so it like, I, I can pull that one out and there's no problem. Which other one should I take next? The middle one, like there? Can I just tell you that the big blocks move a little differently than the smaller ones? One more. The same one below it, like, right? Yeah, yeah that one's not going to move. <laughs> Which makes it even dicier when you take the capstone out. Did you see what happened? Do what? It wiggled. It wiggled. And it wiggled enough that all I've got to do next is move any of them, really. I, I don't know about the top. The last ones to be laid are probably the first ones uh, to be able to be taken. But that capstone makes everything vulnerable. It's a lot easier if I clean it up now uh, before they all fall. So let's do that very quickly since we have other business to get to. But Jesus, as Peter is teaching us, Peter is our, uh, Peter, uh, Jesus is our cornerstone. Think about what you've just said as the blocks fall. You have said that a cornerstone orients, it also purposes or sets apart a particular building for a particular purpose, we can tell uh, either by the plumbing or we can tell by the layout of a place, what it will be eventually. I want you to think about this. It's not just Peter who teaches us about Jesus being the cornerstone. We find this metaphor and this truth about how Jesus orients us, how Jesus uh, produces uh, a strong foundation that we are being built together as referenced uh, in our connection point, Jesus, in the Psalms, in the prophet Isaiah, in the Gospel of Matthew, in the book of Acts of the Apostles, in Paul's letter to the Romans, in his letter to the Corinthians, in his letter to the Ephesians, and then in Peter's work. This is not just a one-off teaching about how it is that Jesus orients us in this life for our work together. There is one best way to set the building blocks of a, a, a construction project because think about what happens it's not just those blocks or bricks or logs that get uh, laid down next to the cornerstone but it's also uh, an ordering process and then those that get placed on top depend on the stability of that which is underneath them we stand today on the shoulders of those who have gone before us. But Jesus is our cornerstone. Without him, there is no endurability. There is no solidarity. There is no strength in what he is doing through us, even in us. And he, our cornerstone, ordains us. Now, normally we use that word just to talk about those who are called to the kind of work that builds up the body. And I think, even as one who is ordained, that we've got to think about all of our work as the ordination of Christ. Because we all have this in common. Each one of us is gifted by God's Holy Spirit and it is your work and my work together that builds this spiritual household that we are to become. So it, all of us, as different as we may be, become one as our cornerstone holds us together. 
and purposes us by design for what will be more than just a spiritual house. Now, I know we talk about the house of God. What were the rules for the house of God, by the way, when you were coming up, as we say? What, you, what could you do and what, you, what could you not do in church? No running. no running. Oh, my gosh, I can't tell you how many whoopings I got because got a little, got a little uh, light in the steps coming down the house and have to be quiet. Well, can I just say we have violated both of those today already because some of our youngers... Uh, they run everywhere they go, just about. And you and I can be, the, the joy, that, what are you supposed to do with the joy that's bubbling up within us when all that is respectful is quiet? There's a time for that. But when Peter is teaching us there are three things that God is expecting us to be built into. That means we allow ourselves to be planted or moved. We allow ourselves to be used by God for a certain purpose. And we allow that there are going to be others we must work with. That would, that's what it means to be built into. Now, Peter calls us a spiritual house. But really, in the Greek, the, the word there means household. It means family. It means folks who are um, working together. I, I was blessed to tour with a group uh, called, uh, that was kind of like Up With People, if you, the Reach Out Singers uh, one summer, and we, as our, on our way back home after a busy summer, we stopped in Little Rock, Arkansas, and this one family uh, asked for eight of us to stay with them. I don't know very many people who could put eight people in their house and it not be a zoo. Well, there was a zoo already because they had adopted, had four biological children of their own, and this family, blessed to be able to make money, decided the best use of that was to adopt children that would probably not be adopted otherwise, special needs children, either because of medical needs or mental health needs. What Sandra failed to realize is that they knew our names ahead of time and who was going to be coming to their house. And my name, along with other uh, Reach Out singers, our names got added to the chore list. Uh, because in a house where there are over a dozen children, things require some order. I, I lost my pool time with everybody else in the family because I was not where I was supposed to be to wash dishes after dinner. I'm good at washing dishes. That was one of the primary chores I had growing up. But I wasn't paying attention. And it requires that in a family. That's, that's not about the kind of building that God is making of us, whether our windows are beautiful or our lawn looks inviting. God intends for us, Cook's United Methodist Church, to be a spiritual household where everybody's work is valued and you understand that you must do your work. But God is also making of us a royal priesthood. You, my friend, are a priest too. So uh, why assign us that title and that work? Priests are the ones in God's people's history that have access to God. We're the ones who teach others and show others. And when others cannot, we make spiritual sacrifices. We also live free from the control of everyone else. It's as if we are... Um, not independent from everyone else, but we are different than culture. We are different than society. That leads me to that third phrase, and we'll take both of them together. We are not only intended by God to be a spiritual household and a royal priesthood. I want you to think kingly, like some of us watched happen yesterday, uh, new in history. 
And we are also to be a holy nation, sacred, set apart, people that live among others who are not set apart only because they don't realize whose child, whose children they are. And we are a people. That is um, a singular expression. We're not people. We are a people. We are God's own We're many, but we're built into one. We are royal, but not for the sake of being able to dress more finely than anyone else, to wear better hats, if you get my drift. We have a responsibility that is royal, and that is to everyone else who is a part of this household, this kingdom How in the world are we going to do that? It begins, my friends, with uh, accepting our place laid next to and joined with the cornerstone, placed on top of and built into not just a foundation but walls and uh, and dividers uh, that are make the household of God stable and inviting, a place of security and safety, a place of belonging for every one who comes. It's very simple how it is that you and I live in reference to the cornerstone. Peter said it this way, we tell of the mighty acts of God that we have experienced as we move from darkness into his marvelous light. There is no way around it, my friends. God expects us to use our mouths to bear witness to what we have experienced of God, to proclaim what we believe is the truth of God. I I want you to think for just a moment what you've used your mouth to proclaim just in these hours since you've been awake. Many of us have celebrated the beauty of the day, what it's like to hear the bird song and to see the sun rise. Some of us have complained because our joints are aching. Don't you laugh at me, Danny Ray? because our joints are aching with the barometric pressure going up because we know it's going to storm later, supposedly. Some of us, uh, whose names will shall remain nameless except for Terry Clay, (laughs) complaining about the Taylor Swift traffic downtown trying to get in and out of work. What have you done with what what have we done with our mouths? Have we greeted our friends and we've shared gossip? Or have we greeted our friends and been able to recognize the beauty of Christ in one another? Have we greeted one another and compounded this joy that is ours because of the strength we are being built into as a household? Or are we talking about everybody and everything else but God? When we bear witness, when we proclaim, God is not asking you to know everything about what's in the Bible. God is simply asking us to tell what you know, what I know of the mighty acts of God, the movement on our behalf of God in the world, the excellencies, that's my favorite translation of that phrase, the excellencies of God. I... You know, we uh, in our household might be a little bit like yours. We're we're trying to eat health, trying to eat healthier. But we celebrated Cinco de Mayo on Seis de Mayo, uh, and I am telling you, there is there is something about cheese dip mixed in with the uh, sisters testifying up here. I. We came up with cheese. I mean, the human race came up with cheese. But who makes cheese? The animals that God made. And God is the one who helped us discover the information that leads to cheese and everything else. And so to bear witness of the beauty of fellowship around the table and what enlivens our bodies is to tell of the mighty acts of 
God in and around us. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. And it really is just about your experience. What have you seen of God? What have you heard of God's voice and God's truth at work in your life? How have you tasted of God and you know of God's goodness? What about the smell? I don't know about you, but fresh cut grass smells like Saturday to me. Because that's the way we did it in my family growing up. And so driving uh, down uh, the roads yesterday, coming back from uh, sharing dinner with my husband, I mean, it smelled like Saturday because we were able to get out and there's actually grass to cut. Uh, That is a mighty act of God too. The beauty and the glory all around us and you, my friends, are evidence of his glory too. We are to tell of our experiences of the mighty acts of God as you and I move from darkness into his marvelous light. The darkness sometimes is simply the darkness of this world that is broken because evil has been allowed to reign. But you and I are a part of that when we would rather choose our own blindness than to accept the truth of God and make changes, when we allow ourselves to be distracted by things, you know, like joints that want to complain about the weather, instead of us being glad we just could get together today. And listen to this, when you and I are disoriented from who and whose we are, it's almost as if we, the bricks and the blocks that are being built together into God's household rebel against the pattern and the place that we have been asked to fill so that the world will come to know the love and the grace of God. His marvelous light is the revelation, the understanding, the new truth that you know which becomes not only our hope for tomorrow, but our freedom in today. The assurance that the life that God has promised us in Jesus Christ isn't just for a time that begins somewhere out there at the end of this age and the beginning of the next, but it begins in this moment. Peter's teaching about Jesus being your cornerstone My cornerstone begs these questions. Will you allow God to claim you? Or are you going to stand resolute? I'm my own person. Will you allow God to claim you? Will you allow God to shower you with mercy? God knows you need it. Each one of us do. Can I remind you that mercy um, in in very simple terms, is not getting what you deserve. Grace is getting what you don't deserve. And God floods our life with both. Will you allow God to shower you with his mercy, protecting you from those things you've earned because of your behavior? And will you allow God to determine and direct your life Because you pay attention and accept the business of the cornerstone. We live in reference to him. And he is the one that directs us toward the very grace of God. Jesus is the cornerstone. You can accept it or not. You heard what Peter had to say. You're going to trip over it every day of your life. If you won't. But if you do. You discover just how much you are loved and how purposed your life is in every role you fill that you might be the evidence of God's glory at work around us. Jesus is our cornerstone. Hallelujah and amen. As we uh, prepare to move forward in our time of worship, this Um, 
beautiful uh, old hymn, Love Divine, All Love's Excelling, uh, enables us to sing about that love that is uh, kind of gluing us together, binding us one brick to another, all in orientation from the cornerstone. You, you can remain seated. Let's sing together verses 1 and 2, hymn number 384. The words will be on the screen or you can use your, um, your hymnal. Uh, and let's sing together, Love Divine, All Love's Excelling. The ushers will come forward, we'll worship with our tithes and offering. And as they're coming down, I'll remind you that listing in your bulletin are other ways that you may give, and they're also on the monitor. Let us pray. For the blessings of this and all our days, we thank you, gracious God. Accept, we pray, not just this money but also our lives freely given in gratitude for all you have done for us. Use them both in this place and wherever you might take us. Amen. Amen.
I'm sorry, I was reading good news. Are you, are you ready for some good news? There are prayers of celebration that we'll add to our list today, so let me just turn our attention uh, there um, already. Uh, we'll prepare to come to the table in just a few moments, but to offer our prayers of thanksgiving and of celebration. Uh, we have dealt with much sickness in our community um, and a lot of uh, other um, uh, difficult news uh, today. One of those things that we would uh, share with you too is the passing of Karen Casali. Uh, Karen is a, um, an extended member of uh, the McCann family and so we pray for uh, the peace of her passing and for the celebration of her life even in this time of grief. And we also uh, pray uh, with great celebration uh, for the birth of two precious new ones, Luke Mar Mariner, 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 born April the 28th, and uh, Ezra Pritchard, Ezra, what a beautiful name, born May the 5th, Cinco de Mayo. There are other, there are other Cinco babies I know in this place. You cough it up. If you're, if you were born on because I know Brooks, uh, Brooks is down visiting his granddaughter who's tw who was 12 on Friday. Anybody else have a Cinco birthday? That's, that's right. Amy? No, no. Is it Amy? Amy has a... Whew. Okay. No, there's great celebration in, in all of that. And we uh, celebrate, too, the very presence of God that has made those who are um, also occupants on our prayer list... Um, to, for them to know hope even as they continue through the struggle that life holds for them now. We know that God is bigger, God is more present, and God has a purpose and a plan. Would you join me as we pray? Lord God, we recognize right now that you are the author of our living. You, you are the source of every breath that we take. Uh, the passions and the joys that we find in life. You are our strength when that joy wanes. We, you are our direction and our hope for all of the things we are walking into and you are the guardian of our souls in this moment, right now. Whatever the rest of our minds and our hearts hold, we know that you mean for protection and provision to be the proclamation that we make. And we don't see it in the mirror often, but you look at us according to your word, and you see grace and glory. So often we live as if our own strength and our own wisdom are the measure by which we get by in life, and we forget that we are not the ones who have to make it all work together. That you, Lord Jesus, are our cornerstone. You are the pivotal uh, connection in our lives, the one that then orders every other brick and block to be laid down in the right and righteous order. Not that we don't matter, but that we matter very much and our willingness to use our voices, indeed our, our whole lives, to bear witness to you, to bring glory and honor to you is our privilege. We thank you for a moment to be able to celebrate as a body together new life born in to this world for the stick to for the perseverance that your Holy Spirit enables in us that we might remain your household, ready to receive anyone whosoever comes to us, needing, needing to understand, wanting more of your grace and your mercy. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered in this place that we might be truly your people, a holy nation, a royal priesthood, a spiritual household being built together 
in and through and because of your Son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. It's in his name that we pray and God's people say, Amen. As we begin to prepare to come to the feast that is set before us today, I want to remind you of a couple of things here in uh, the Wesleyan tradition. We practice an open table. You don't have to be a member of this congregation, a member of this denomination. Uh, if you are here and have heard of the invitation by love himself, then you are welcome. Uh, we'll also be uh, taking by uh, you taking a piece of the bread. You don't have to grab it from Bonnie. She's good at doing what she does, and she'll hold it firm for you to be able to take a piece of the bread without having to use two or three hands uh, to do that. Just grab a piece of the bread, and there will be a, a little cup uh, for you to also take juice uh, from. And we have a um, gluten-free option. Um, so if you require that to maintain your health, we want you to know that we love you and that we're ready to serve you as well. You can find all of the liturgy beginning in our, um, in our hymnal uh, on page 12, or the words for your part in the liturgy will be on the screen uh, in front of you, as preachers typically do. I got some extra things to say. Don't wig out when I'm saying something you don't see in your hymnal. I'm coming back around. Uh, it is good for us to be together in this place. And so let me offer you this invitation. It is Christ our Lord who invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and who seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, it is with courage that we confess our sin before God and before one another even now. Would you pray with me? Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Oh, my brothers and sisters, would you hear the good news? Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And we share together in the words of the great thanksgiving. Uh, you'll find your uh, part easy to notate. Um, we invite you to share as you feel comfortable. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey, and set before us the way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your son from the dead. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. 
He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and he said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread. And in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus the Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and make uh, and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. And by your spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your son Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in your holy church All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, we pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your Holy Spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Um, we have, okay, so I know, I know it's May, um, but we've chosen uh, a hymn to close with. I know you already saw it in the bulletin. You overachievers read ahead anyway, and you've probably thought, what in the world? Okay, so we talked about what it means for us to be built together and the way you and I live according to Jesus, the cornerstone that references us, that orients us, that ordains us and our work is to be able to bear witness. So why wouldn't we sing, Go Tell It From the Mountain? So that's exactly what we're going to do. Him, do what? In just a minute. In just a moment. There we go. Number 251 is the hymn number. You can find the words um, up there. Uh, and we want to invite you to stand as you're comfortable uh, to be able to do. How many verses, Rick? Uh, three. Okay, there you are. <laughs> So I invite Rick to now. Now. Uh, good morning. <clears throat> um, yeah, thank you for allowing me to share. So, um, talked with, uh, you know, I was gone for a couple of weeks uh, right after Easter. Um, I don't know if a lot of you know what I do in my life besides play the piano and direct the handbells and, and the choir and, you know, give Sandra a hard time. Um, but there's a lot of things I do outside this church in my music uh, life and my career. And um, with my career is picking up musically, and that's why I'm traveling, and I'll be traveling a lot more. So I talked with Sandra on Wednesday in the SPRC and, of course, the choir that um, I will be leaving at the um, end of uh, the summer. Um, just be, I'll be just gone so much. Um, this was, so you know, one of the hardest... I did it. Yeah. Pinch it, pinch it, pinch it. Very hard decision. 
I've prayed for several months on this, but it's, it's the right thing um, for me to do. And um, I make the announcement now. So we have time to find some replacement um, to, for this church. I love this place. Um, I will be sharing in the newsletter um, a little bit more of what I do and why I'm leaving um, so you have a better understanding. This isn't the time and place for that. But we have work to do still. I'm not leaving yet. Um, I've got three really fun things that are happening in this month. Uh, we have the talent show, uh, July 29th, that uh, want to make that really special. And then a big musical celebration we'll be doing on the 30th. So um, that's all I have to say about that. And you, you, you have to know, I've been doing this 37 years. I know not I- Not here. Not here. <laughs> and I know I, I'm, I started when I was 10, so. Uh, but actually, two weeks from today, I'm celebrating my 60th birthday. So I've been doing this a very long time. And um, it's time a new chapter has taken um, place in my life. So that's, that's it. Good, good. And we're, 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 I think we're good to sing this a cappella. Oh. And so would you come down sure. here? And for the, this is the first time we get to hold hands with everybody else. But you are a part of this ministry as a whole, and I just want to recognize there's so much that musicians miss out on because they're busy making our moments feel deep and holy, and we, it feels like that often because of who you are, and there is nobody else who could give me a harder time.